Hey guys, Greg here. Let's talk about two important data structures known as stacks and queues. Okay, let's first talk about stacks. So the reason it's called a stack is because you can kind of visualize it like quite literally you'd think of what a stack is. It's putting things on top of the stack. Now, generally in computer science, we more so think about it as building left to right. So if we had an array, a dynamic array, so this thing can increase in size, maybe we put five on the stack and then the whole point is just appending to the right of it. So we could then put seven on the top up, and then eight and then four, for example. Now this looks like an array and it could be implemented as an array, but the whole point of a stack is that you really only care about what's on the top. If we thought about this as an actual stack where it's going up here, you can't actually access this stuff over here. And that's the point. You're only ever concerned with what's at the top or how we'll visualize it is what's on the right side. Now a stack has a few different common operations. We've already been using this one, which is append. Sometimes you might see it be called add. As you can see, we're putting on numbers here, except in general, you can kind of put on any data type that you want, including complex ones. So maybe it was actually kind of nested here where this was five as well as a string of hi, and maybe this position here was actually seven and the string of hello. You can kind of put anything that you want on the stack, but we'll just stick with numbers here. Okay, so one of the most common operations is append. It's what we've been using so far, which basically just increases its size. It puts one more thing on the right side. And so if you append a a number x and the time complexity of this kind of depends on how you implement this so if this was implemented as a dynamic array well then maybe under the hood we had a static array five seven eight four and if there was no more space in this static array then to add a new element say three at the end we'd well, actually have to take all of this stuff so an o of n operation to copy all of this stuff to a new position five eight seven four and three maybe leave some space at the end so we don't have to do as many transfers so that append might be o of n but if our static array had some space left over, so if we already had a zero at the end here, well then adding a three would just be kind of changing that position to be three. So if this is implemented as a dynamic array, then this is going to be on average O of one. And that's usually how we'll implement stacks in Python, just because it's the easiest way to do that. However, you could also implement this as a linked list. Well, then if you were to append, well, then if you actually had access to this last thing here, and so we'll say it's a doubly linked list so that we definitely have the head and the tail. Well, then to add a new element to the end here, that's actually just going to be a constant operation. You just add, say, a three at the end, and you would point that back over here. And so that is going to be an O of one operation. Now this is definitely an option. However, in practice, you'll kind of see most people, including myself, just use a dynamic array because it is on average O of one. It is most of the time constant and it's just a lot easier in practice. Another common operation is called pop and that just means take off what's on the top here. So we're always concerned with what's on the top or the right side. If we pop, we pop off that four. Well, that's always going to be an O of one, not even with the asterisk. It's going to be completely O of one because if this was the static array of say five, seven, eight, and four, if you wanted to remove what's on the end here, you need to keep a contiguous sequence of elements, but you can do that. You would just kind of change this to say a zero saying we're not using it. And so you still have that sequence. That's going to be an exactly O of one thing. On average, it's O of one. Pop deleting at the end is always going to be O of one. A stack's other main operation is just called peak. And this one's really simple here. It's just an O of one operation, really no matter how you implement it. So you would just be asking what's on the top of the stack. It just means what is position here. Well, if this was a dynamic array, then we have O of one access to any array position. And in Python, if this thing was called say S for stack, you would just say S at negative one, which automatically implies the last position, the last index. And you have O of one access to that. It just tells you that the number is four. Okay. And really the only other thing you might do with a stack is ask if it's empty. So is empty is how it would be written in a data structures class and this is definitely going to be an o of one thing to do it's just a true or false that says if this thing is empty return true if it's not empty aka there's anything in it like there is here this would return false okay so if the stack looked something like this if the stack was like this then that would return true that it is empty and how you would usually implement this type of thing is actually just do if s if s has anything in it then this would evaluate to true here and if s had nothing in it so it looked like this then it would evaluate evaluate to false. So that's generally how you would do that. So those are the main things that you would do with a stack. You would append, so add stuff to the right side of it. You would pop, so you take stuff away from the right side of it. And you peek by asking what's on the top. And you'll find it's very common to ask if it's empty, so if there's anything in it or not. Now there's this acronym that gets thrown around that I'm not really 
a big fan of because I think it's hard to remember. But in any data structures class, they'll always say that this is a LIFO thing. So stacks are LIFO. This stands for last in, first out. Last in basically means the most recent thing that you put in. So the last thing that you put in is going to be the first thing that comes out. Well, that makes sense because if you append an element, so you append that for, then when you pop, that is going to be the first thing that comes out. Okay, now let's talk about queues. They're basically the polar opposite of a stack. They're very similar in many regards, but basically follow the exact opposite rules. So the reason for a queue is basically if you had some people in line, and we'll just say person one, person two, and person three, let's say they were going to a movie, so they wanted to watch a movie. If person one got in the line first, so person one's here, then person two came after that, and then person three came after that, well, you would want person one to be processed first. They would want to be the first one that sees the movie. So we would see person one, and then these two would move over, and we would see person two, and then person three. This clearly is not a stack, because if you put in person one, then two, then three, well, stacks follow the last in first out property. We actually put in three at the end there, so that was the last thing we put in. Well, we don't want that to be the first that comes out. We don't want to reward three for showing up late. We want it to act as a queue, which is going to have a first in first out property, which means that one was the first thing that came in. And so even though we put in two and three after that, we want one to be the first thing that gets processed, then two, then three. So that is the first in first out process. And that's what's going to be important for a queue. Okay, so let's say that we had that we had one, then two, then three. So notice the order I drew those in, I had one, then two, then three. There's a few different operations for a queue. So one would be called on queue, and the queue stuff is spelled really, really weirdly. So on queue basically just means put in a new number x into the queue. So this is what's currently in our queue. We haven't processed any of these. And if you wanted to on queue four, basically say a person four walked in, well, you would want that to go over here. So you'd put that at the end there. That is basically an append operation. You could definitely implement this as a dynamic array where that is just an append operation because that's very fast here. That's going to be an O of one operation. The other main operation would be DQ. That just means basically pop, but you wouldn't want to pop from this side because that would be a last in first out. You'd want to pop from this side. So a Q appends on the right side and it pops from the left side. Stacks are going to append to the right side and they're going to pop the things that are on the right side. Qs are going to to append to the right, and they're going to pop the stuff from the left side. Okay, so DQ, that just takes off the first thing in the queue. And let's think about this. This is actually really tricky. If this was implemented as a dynamic array, and you wanted to pop off this one, well, then how is this implemented under the hood? Well, if this is a dynamic array, it has some sort of a static array under the hood, which might look something like this. Now, for static arrays, you can't just do this and leave this empty, because this is not a valid array anymore. This would mess it up. What you'd have to do is delete this and then move all of this stuff over. Okay, we've covered this in the dynamic arrays and static arrays section. That pop there, that is going to be an O of N thing to do to DQ something from the left side. If you're deleting from the beginning, that is going to be an O of N operation because all of this other stuff has to move over. And that is exactly why in practice, we actually don't implement a queue as a dynamic array. We would probably implement this one as say a doubly linked list. Now we can actually have DQ is going to be an exactly O of one operation. And same thing with the on queue here, because if you wanted to DQ, well, that means take stuff off the left side. This is basically just doing this and you would move over your head. It's really not too bad to do that at all. It's going to be an O of one operation. Note that this is not a dynamic array anymore. And I'm going to kind of remove the brackets because this is not a dynamic array. If you wanted to queue something onto the end here, well, then we would put say a five here. Well, to do that, you have O of one access to the tail. So you'd basically just put this over here and you would point this around like that, update your tail and boom. So that's why it's okay to use stacks as dynamic arrays because we're appending and popping from the right side and both of those are fast. But for a queue, we are doing something where we append to the right and we pop from the opposite side. So for these, you definitely would do something like a doubly linked list. Okay, so let's first talk about stacks. So they're actually really easy to implement. We generally just use a dynamic array. So maybe we had an empty stack, we'll just call it SDK, you would start that out as nothing in it so far. So if you were to print that, obviously, there's not going to be too much. Okay, if you wanted to append to the stack, and so you would basically just stack dot append a number, say five. And if you were to print that, this is really, really easy stuff, you could do a few more of these, we'll append a four at the end, we'll append a three at the end, and we'll just
we'll just see that we have a stack. Really simple stuff. Okay, you might also want to pop from the stack. So again, from the top of the stack. So generally when you work with stacks, you actually want to keep track of the stuff that you popped. So you could do x is equal to stack.pop and that is going to take off that final element and it's actually gonna return that to you. So you could print x as well as print the stack. That's gonna show you that the thing we popped off was the three on the top of the stack and that line also caused a side effect on our stack to turn it into this one. Okay, that's the main stuff that you'd want to do with stacks. You could definitely ask what's on the top and you'd basically just ask, hey, what is the stack at negative one? And that's going to output you four. And really the last thing that you'd want to do is ask if something is in the stack. So the way you would do this in practice is basically if stack, you would do something. So we could print true. This would only run if something was in the stack. So print true. Yes, this does output true, meaning there's stuff in the stack. But if you were to pop a couple things here, so stack.pop, that is going to take off the four. If you run this again, that's going to take off the five. If you run this one more time, you actually get an error because you tried to pop from an empty list, aka pop from an empty stack, which is why before you ever run pop, you should probably do something like this, where if you have a stack, then you're allowed to pop. We run that, that actually outputs nothing because we didn't have a stack. Okay, so I'm just gonna run this again from the top so that everything matches up. And that's really all there is to talk about stacks here. Let me again just make a reminder that stacks follow the last in first out policy or LIFO as opposed to queues, which are going to follow the first in and first out policy. So the very first thing that came in is going to be the first thing that came out. So for the purpose of solving problems, we're going to just do from collections, we're going to import the DQ object and note that it's written like that again, and kind of different from how Q is actually written because Q is written like this. Q is equal to an empty DQ object. And if you're to print that, that's not really going to show a whole lot. And sorry, that should actually be a lowercase d that is sensitive. So we'll make a lowercase DQ. And that's just gonna show you have an empty DQ. So firstly, why is this called DQ? Well, it's actually because this is like a double-ended Q, basically meaning that you would have an object that looks roughly like this. Now I'm drawing it with square brackets, but it's not actually a dynamic array. It's basically a double-ended queue, meaning that it has two ends. And so you could add stuff to the right. So you could do stuff like add to the right. You could pop stuff from the right, as well as from the left side, you can add stuff to the left side and you can pop stuff from the left side. All of those operations are going to be big O of one. So essentially it operates as a double-ended queue, but for our purposes, we're just gonna make it a normal queue. Okay, so to on queue something, so this basically means that we're going to add an element to the right side. Okay, so to do that, it's actually going to look exactly the same. We would just q.append some element, say q.append 5, and if you are to output that, so if you're to do that, we'll just see that it has 5. We'll just do a couple more of these, so q.append 6, and we're going to run this from the beginning, so that's just going to be the q of 5 and 6. Okay, so you could do that in O of 1 time, and what you can also do is dq an object. You can dq, which means remove an element from the left. This might also be called a pop left, because basically, you would just do q.pop left. It's very important that you write left there because if you just write pop, well, that's going to make it act as a stack because you append to the right and you pop from the right. But if you append to the right and you pop from the left side, well, then that's going to return that element that you popped and it is going to be the five. So the thing that's on the left. Very importantly, this is an O of one operation. It's not implemented as a dynamic array. It'll be something like a doubly linked list where you have O of one add and removal from both sides. Then if you were to peek on either side, so we'll say peek from left side here, see what's on the left or basically who's ready to come out of the queue. And so that's going to be a queue at, these things do still sort of have indices here. So if you have queue at zero, that is going to tell you it's the first thing and queue at negative one, well, that's still gonna be six because that's that's all we have in the queue. But let me just add one more thing here, q.append a7. So if we run this all from the beginning here, an empty queue, we add five, then six, then seven, we pop one, and so that's going to pop the five. So currently our queue is looking like this, six and seven. If you were to ask what's at the beginning, you would do that with q at zero. So that is gonna tell you it's the six. And if you wanted to see what's at the end, so peak from the right side, basically who's last in the line to come out, that is gonna be q at negative one one will tell you that it is the seven. You'll see in practice, we end up putting more than just numbers on stacks and queues. You often put kind of more complex stuff like tuples of values or lists of values or even dictionaries. You can put
put really anything you want on stacks and queues. And that's the clever part of these algorithm questions. Okay, drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.